The most interesting thing I just saw was the illusion of a live dolphin and the ability to interact with it. When I first saw the dolphin, um, I thought it could be real. And certainly, if I was a little kid, I definitely could have thought it was real. <laughs> I got to, well, I mean, I got to swim with the dolphin. I got to uh, just kind of replicate its movements and um, kind of just that body undulation underwater. I think, you know, it's kind of surprising there are like 3,000 dolphins in, currently in captivity being used to, to generate several billions of dollars just for dolphin experiences. And so um, there's obviously an appetite to, to love and learn about dolphins. And so we want to use that appetite and, and offer kind of different ways to, to fall in love with a dolphin. An easy way to think about it is if your normal day consists of swimming 100 miles in the ocean and now you're swimming 75 feet and that's your entire existence, um, it's just so unnatural an environment. You can dress it up, you can make it look blue and ocean-like, but it's a fact of being a, a social roaming animal um, and then constrained within bas basically a bathtub. and so. I think it's psychological, physiological, um, you know, impact, really. The idea of this pilot is really to create a kind of Sesame Street underwater. Um, those characters taught a generation how to feel about different kinds of aspects of humankind in ways that had never been imagined before. And that's what we dream of with this project. Acacia, take it away. We realized that using animatronics instead of using live animals enabled us to create characters that truly were lovable, um, that would really deliver on the idea that we won't hurt what we fall in love with. And they're faster and way more nimble than sharks in the water. So and a dolphin swam up underneath him and pushed him to the surface and nudged him back. Oh, what a great idea. Um, I'm gonna try humans. You, ah, Del wants to know how many humans. Everyone wants to know if using an animatronic dolphin is different than using a real dolphin. The truth is, in many ways, they're the same. If you want to design a show to use real dolphins, you've got to capture real dolphins, train them, 
and then get them to use, do that show. With creating robots, you have to do exactly the same thing. The difference is you don't have to do animal husbandry. You don't have to have breeding programs. You don't have to worry about uh, the safety with human beings. And you can use your imaginations to imagine entirely different kinds of educational and entertainment experiences for the animals to do. It doesn't just have to be about acrobatics. Really soon, you'll be able to see animals like this in marine parks, science centers, and zoos near us, and near you as well. Um, and you'll be able to help us create stories that will make us fall in love with them, so that we grow up, we'll want to protect them. The marine park industry has been kind of consecutively losing money decade by decade for the last several decades for a lot of reasons. There's a way to reimagine it. We've been seeing acrobatic shows for almost half a century now. Imagine what would happen if animals that could never be in large aquariums came there. Great white sharks, fantasy dragons that could come out of the water and spit fire, Jurassic animals that you could swim with and experience that world. It's not only about dolphins, it's also about anything your imagination can come up with. I'll tell you about a magical place today. It's called the Oceanarium, the Island of Dreams. There is a dolphin that lives there who learned how to understand our language. These kids were making sounds and then um, the dolphin came over and said hi.